welcome to Scott's Speed Triple Channel. Four days in Robbinsville. Home of the Tale of the Dragon, the Cherahala Skyway, and the Devil's Triangle. We trailered the bikes, arrived Monday night. We unloaded the bikes, got some food, and prepared for the rest of the week. We stayed at the Phillips Historic Motel and Cottages. It was a nice place. They had a covered parking for the bikes and they had plenty of room to park your truck and, and trailers. And there were dragons there. Lots of dragons. After we unpacked the bikes, I realized I'd forgotten the key fob at home. Being a keyless system, I was a little bit worried. I had remembered to bring my backup key fob. Backup key fob is an RFID chip, just a little tiny thing. And you have to hold it in a position under the tail section of the bike and turn the ignition on and once it pops up on the screen you can take it away and start the bike. I got good at it. weather forecast for the week was pretty lousy. Hey, that's the key fob on the top left under the cigarette pack I forgot at home. Fortunately, I'd gotten the backup key fob only a couple of weeks earlier. It didn't come with the bike. They lost it in the packaging somewhere. Mm, but I finally got the small one. Oh, Peyton reminded me of the Black Knight or Darth Vader. We were only about a block from 129, which is the Dragon, but only a small section of it. It's about half an hour, 20 minute ride to get to the Dragon from where we were. The roads were really nice all around that place. The weather for today was 50% chance of thunderstorms all day. So when it was overcast, we headed towards the Deals Gap Motorcycle Resort. I think we'd have breakfast. So at the Deals Gap Motorcycle Resort Cafe, we had some breakfast. Uh, it was early October, so hence all the Halloween stuff. T-shirts and signed by all kinds of clubs and various organizations all over the ceiling. Patches all over the wall. Uh, that Jacksonville Fire and Rescue patch was right by where I sat down to eat. time we got finished eating, it was raining. So it was a light rain and we decided we'd go ahead and ride the dragon in the rain, Peyton having never been here before. So well, you go ahead and leave and off we went. going to see a sign coming up on the right hand side that I, I just thought was really fitting for the dragon. It shows a hard left, hard right, but the sign itself is bent and pointing like right out over the cliff. <laughs> just kind of seemed really fitting for the area.
roads were really wet by this point, leaves, and just took our time. There's another sign that says the same thing at the other end of the dragon coming back this way. The dragon is 11 miles long, 318 turns. It's one mile in North Carolina and about 10 miles in Tennessee. Those gold wings were like the only other bikes we saw on the road that trip. After we got back to the, uh, we rode back to the Deals Gap Motorcycle Resort. Peyton liked the road, didn't like the weather. The uh, Gold Wings were the only bikes we saw and as we got ready to head back to the motel, since it was starting to rain even harder, the Gold Wings were headed back the other way. We got back to the motel mid-afternoon. It started to lighten up and clear up. We decided to ride the Cherahala Skyway. We met a gentleman, Fernando, from Canada. Uh, he was there on a BMW GS model. It recently, recently retired and was going to ride his brand new BMW GS uh, throughout the United States to do some touring. Well, during the uh, season with travel restrictions, he could not ride his bike over the border. So he flew to New York and he bought a used BMW GS model and carried on. Cherahola Skyway was nice. Roads were still damp in places, but um, pretty clear, not too bad. It's very much like the Dragon, no access. Some pullover points here or there, but businesses, no homes, so it's a pretty clear road. It goes up to 5,390 5, feet elevation at the highest point. It's a 30-something mile road. Come all the way over the top of a mountain. The other end, there's a little town. Stopped in a little town to eat dinner. Beautiful road. What motorcycles were made for?
Jason was riding his 2020 Honda Shadow Phantom 750. I was on my new Speed Triple 1200 RS. And Fernando was on a BMW GS model. Fortunately, the ride back was in a major thunderstorm. It was dark. The Denali lights helped out some, but with the heavy rain, it didn't make a whole lot of difference. And all the footage was gone. The following day was a terrible day, so we took the truck to Knoxville. I got a uh, spanner wrench to stiffen up my rear shock a little bit. Got back, and I went to the car wash. Wednesday was a wasted day. But I did get good at starting the bike with the backup key fob. Where you basically hold this little tiny RFID chip under the tail section and click the switch. Wait till the logo appears, that means it's coming on. So we planned Thursday's ride and that was to go to the Devil's Triangle. It was about 75 miles from where we were. It took us uh, right over the tail of the dragon back roads to get there. And it's a uh, 44 mile loop. It's three Tennessee roads. I forget what they are now but I'll post them on there. Really nice. Really nice. Suburban areas. Uh, or urban areas I should say. Some of the roads had a lot of houses on them, some were kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, a few of them and one of the roads had a bit of a business district on it. Very nice though. What was really cool was how the, uh, the drop-offs, the, the cliffs on the side of the road, would go from the left side of you to the right hand side of you. It's kind of creepy. You got a left hand drop and then make two turns, boom, now the drop's on the right. There were guardrails in some places, and in some places didn't have any guardrails. We looked down a long ways down the mountains. There were a lot of switchbacks, a lot of gentle curves, virtually nothing straight away. Not for more than maybe an eighth of a mile would be a long straight away. The road was in pretty good shape. Here you can see how the drop-offs on the right. There's a guardrail, some places there's none. Within a couple, two, three turns, it seems like the drop-off will be on your left. It was uh, relatively damp. I would say 70% dry, 30% damp, a lot of leaves on the road. As we were changing from one road to another, we got uh, flagged down by some bikes, and they had uh, told us about a tree that had fallen across the road.
just as we're about to turn on to this next road, I forget which road it was, uh, these gentlemen coming up the other side, coming towards us, flagged us over. Told us about a fallen tree blocking the road. Be careful. of the road slide down the mountain or one from one side or the other. But I didn't think uh, it's not no big deal, no big deal. We came up on one that was kinda had some debris out in the road a little bit. So I had hoped with the new bike to get comfortable, uh, I'd get a little bit more used to the cornering and braking, and really the weather didn't permit it. We didn't get a, a whole lot of real dry, dry time. I did get used to what the anti-lock brakes were like. I've never had a bike with anti-lock brakes before. And a few times they kicked in. I thought it would be like, Oh shit, what's that problem? And let go of the brake. No, they happen so quick, you don't have a chance to react. They react so fast. So we took a more direct route back to the motel and uh, headed into this storm. Telling Peyton I need some gasoline. We uh, made it to the gas station dry. Progressively got worse for about 20 minutes and then it started to, we went through it and it lightened up a bit by the time we got back to the dragon. Again, I wish I had some footage. I lost a lot of footage. Had some problems with the GoPro uploading stuff to the computer and the GoPro crapped out on me in this rain. This rain also crapped the bike camera out. It started working again after it dried out a few days later. But yeah, we rode right through the heart of the storm, and it was pretty heavy. Saturday morning, uh, 
Oh yeah, back to the back to the car wash. Um, the plan was to leave Saturday morning. And uh, Friday I went ahead and washed the bike again in the morning and we did some loops that were closer to town. The weather actually turned out to be really nice on Friday. Uh, I'm gonna get the thumbs up because the bike is clean. The uh, loops we did were closer by, and uh, they did include the tail of the dragon one time, which we did pretty much in a, in a dry road. Uh, we got to see the Outland Boogeyman at this little shop we stopped at. Pretty scenic, nice little river going by. Got good pictures of the bikes. And since it was such a nice day and we were going to be leaving the following morning, we went and did the Appalachian Loop that night. And uh, it's called the Appalachian Loop because it crosses over the Appalachian Trail a couple of times. And uh, it's very, very dark. But I wanted to get more time on the bike before we had to leave. The Denali lights work really good. I should have remembered to maybe turn them off and then back on so you could see the difference, but that bright, bright spotlight out there is the Denali light. Uh, I wish it had a little bit wider beam, but the, the flood lamp is too wide. So I've got one with a spot beam and one with the flood, one with the, uh, flood lamp. And there's the end of our evening, coming back into Robbinsville about 10, 10.30ish. Headed back towards the motel. Had a few cars flash their high beams at me, but the lights were adjusted for me. They were just bright. We arrived back at the motel to find that three gold wings had taken all the covered spots to themselves and there was no more room to put my bikes in, which was a little frustrating. So we thought, we thought, well, let's park our bikes, nice. let's park the bikes sideways in front of them so they can't get out in the morning. And then we'll just get up late in the meantime. Hey, oh, sorry guys, we didn't block you in. But, uh, so we, were, we, we ended up back at the motel and we found this. All the other bikes that had been parking there would park like single file so that they could all leave at one time and leave room for other bikes. Not these guys, right? Straight across, boom, boom, boom. So anyway, we decided to just load up the trailers and then we left that night. We headed home and were home by Saturday morning around 9, 10 o'clock. Saved a day trailer rental. And overall it was a nice trip. This is back on the tail of the dragon. So uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to comment or question. I'll try to respond to all comments and questions. Uh, this would be my first edited video, so hopefully they'll get a little better and perhaps a little shorter in the future. Uh, again, it was nice to have you watch the video subscribe and I'll let you know when there's more coming up.